This is the Hour of Awesome with Robert, Chris, and Steven. This isn't the Hour of Neat, Cool, or Rad. It is all going to be awesome. All right, so let's welcome everybody back to the Hour of Awesome. This is the second season of the Hour of Awesome. There might have been a slight delay between season one and season two while we were recording <laughs> the Orient or whatnot. Um... I'm going to hand it off to Robert to introduce our show and see where we're going. Okay, so uh, we thought, as our way of rebooting the show, we'd go over today our personal gaming histories. Uh, I am coming to you from sunny Las Cruces, New Mexico. So we're on different coasts this time, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this goes remote. So uh, since you last heard from us, which was 17, 18 years ago, uh, clearly, Chris has gained much more guitar porn. Um, <laughs> how many do you have now, man? Uh, I'm up to ten. <laughs> okay, and I, were, uh, that's a lot fairly recently, isn't it? Yeah, I bought two this weekend, but it's a that's another story. <laughs> okay, well, it fell um, into your other podcast, man. You know, it makes yeah, sense. yeah. Oh, uh, Garrett Garrett Weinzerl, who does. Uh, the Angry Chicken and uh, many other wonderful podcasts on AMOVE TV said his favorite logo that he's done how, was Six Strings and Things. Oh, cool. And cool. he really enjoyed doing that. So that's uh, Chris's guitar podcast. So for all things guitar and gear. So go. I can remember the tagline, uh, even though my name's in there and I haven't shown up for like the last 83 episodes. <laughs> uh, there on like episode two? <laughs> Yeah, uh, that was about it. <laughs> yeah, I got to get back in the groove, uh, especially since Chris bought me a guitar, for God's sake. Uh, <laughs> talk about peer pressure. That didn't seem to work. No, no, I've actually, I have been playing a bit. Uh, I'm starting to get into it, and uh, I think uh, it will be something to do down here, and I want to teach my daughter how to play, so I can't completely suck by when I start instructing her, figure I've got, <laughs> Half a year, so. This is the guitar. Yeah. There are several strings. We're going to say between five and seven. Not quite sure. Between five, somewhere between five and seven. Yeah, well, I'm going to be teaching her on ukulele. Oh, that's a good starter. Yeah. Yeah, because she's three and a half, and she can hold it without it crushing her. <laughs> right. Um, or cutting her fingers. It's relatively, relatively nice on the fingers, even though they're nylon, mm -hmm. and not brutal. So, uh, personal gaming histories. So, uh, my first exposure to video games was Pong. It was at an uncle's house, I'm guessing 77, 78, somewhere around there. Uh, and I just remember being mesmerized. Uh, I was probably 12 years old, 11, 12. And just seeing this ball, or actually a little white square, <laughs> bounce back and forth on In the your screen. In mind, it was a ball. Yeah, there was real people yeah. there. Yeah, well, I was a little kid, so you had extra things in, and you know, he went all the way to Sears to get it. Uh, and to think that that was a gaming outlet at one time, <laughs> he went to Sears to get your palm. Uh, and it was amazing. So the next thing I got exposed to was probably a year later. So I know I was 12 years old, and I think it was ColecoVision. Um, had a buddy who had a ColecoVision. Wow, spent a lot of time on that thing. <laughs> Yeah, that, and then um, the Atari. Mostly it was always at friends' houses that I went and played um, on consoles. Uh, we didn't own any consoles. I don't think my family ever owned a console. Uh, it wasn't until I was out of high school and bought my first console myself. Uh, but I played lots of console games, lots of arcade games. I must have spent, oh, 50 hours just playing Gauntlet. When that was it, uh, with friends, you know, the warrior needs food badly. It's still in my head. Um, so the first time that I was actually really a gamer was PC gaming. Uh, the Zork era, you know, the old text-based games. Is that really PC gaming when you're Zorking it? Well, and it wasn't even a PC, it was an Apple. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was on Boeing mainframe. So they had Zork on there as an artificial intelligence experiment. 
uh, got on there with my 110 bod modem and got to play Zork. Uh, and that was amazing. You know, Online gaming. Yeah, well, you, I was going to be eaten by a guru. Uh, I remember that thing. It was fun, but it's unbelievably frustrating. Uh, first time I got silly response from a... Is that me? Not me. I mean, dishes clinking. It could be my wife. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm um, turn down the mic sensitivity. Yeah, I got really frustrated at one point and typed eat self, you know, because there were very few commands. And it said auto cannibalism is not the answer. There you go. I'm just finding that hysterical. That and the cat ass trophy uh, or catastrophe. They had a cat ass trophy hanging on the wall. There you go. Uh, then played wizardry. Did you guys ever do that one? I don't know that one. It was kind of just uh, outlines for a corridor you'd go down, and then a thing that was supposed to be a monster, kind of vaguely drawn. Um, played way too much of a Star Trek clone off uh, CompuServe, where you basically flew around and shot Asterix. <laughs> you know, it, was, uh, it was almost, I think it was almost, maybe it was ASCII. It may have just been ASCII. It may not even have been sprites flying around. Um, so are I you transitioning now into sort of door games, or where are you at in that process? I'm trying, I'm trying to get a sense of, because you've mixed a bunch of different things together. Here. Yeah, well, with Wizardry, I then went into RPGs. You know, uh, I was a nerd, so played uh, Chainmail, and then into Dungeons & Dragons after that a little bit. But never could find anyone to play with. Uh, Either no one else willing to admit they were that level of nerd, or it was just bad luck. Because uh, it was pretty hot at the time. Um, the first real Dungeon Master books coming out, the, you know, the hardbacks. Uh, second, I think it was the second revision of the rules. Well, and you're, again, West Coast, where this stuff is really big. Right? Yeah, this was in Seattle. Yeah. Yeah, so that was, that was a lot of fun. But I started playing a lot of, our, a lot of the RPGs. Um, Ultima uh, Online, never played that. But there was uh, the whole Ultima series by Rich Garriott. So, man, I must have played at least five or six of those. Mm -hmm. So those were just so consuming. And then Doom came out, changed everything. It was about yeah. 94, 95 at that point. Yeah, the only real exposure I'd had to anything like that, there was a top-down version of Castle, Castle Wolfenstein. Oh, Castle Wolfenstein was fantastic, yeah. Um, and then Doom came out. It seems like right after. It was probably a couple of years, though, wasn't it? So I can't really remember. Two or three years, yeah. Yeah, but Doom. Doom, that was, oh, my God. <laughs> well, so again, what, what you've had here is you've got a mixture of various things going on, right? So some yeah. of this stuff is um, self-immersive kinds of stuff, right? So you've got, I can play this at home myself playing a game, right? And so right. you're playing Ultima on your computer, right? right? So that contrasts with even playing a console-based game where you can play by yourself, but you can play two people if you got the NES or if you got in television or if you got Atari or any of these yeah. systems, right? Yeah, I didn't get to do any of that stuff until I started playing MUDs, mm -hmm. uh, the old multi-user dungeons, yeah, yeah. the... Mostly off uh, BBSs, yep. so bulletin board systems. Hmm. Uh, I remember one, there was one in Seattle called the Pirates of Puget Sound. Uh, was a bulletin board where you could play a lot of these games, uh, start to play them, interacting with other people. Mm -hmm. So, But that was years before that really took off. Right. Well, again, that's where I want to sort of have the, the, the different touchstones here. So I think yeah. you're you're fast forwarding pretty quickly through this whole whole process, but I feel like we've because I never really got to play couch co op. Yeah. So you guys probably played probably well. I know Chris must have because he had a brother, lucky right. bastard. Uh, <laughs> probably played a lot more couch co op than the rest of us got to. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's just part of the culture. Um, oh, <clears throat> sorry. You you over adjusted on that one. I over adjusted, so now can you hear me now? Yes, yeah. sir. All right, good, good. Yeah, turn the mic down while uh, my wife was doing the dishes, I think, in the background or something. <laughs> so, uh, good quality podcasting. At least that hasn't changed. So, uh, yeah, definitely. Um, couch couch co-op was just part of what we did. In fact, it was usually, you know, my mom had a, a daycare center. She ran out of her house. 
And so it would be like six or seven of us sitting around the NES when that came out, um, just passing the controllers around, people playing Mario until uh, your character died, and you pass the controller to the next person. They played until that character died, and you know, around it went. Uh, NES, though, wasn't my earliest entry into um, gaming, though. Uh, other than, I don't actually don't remember what the first thing was, but I do remember the first console we had, which was an Atari 600XL. And that was a, yeah, that was a computer, yeah. <laughs> right? It was a <laughs> keyboard, basically, with a cartridge input, a cartridge port, and uh, ports for the Atari controllers. But we didn't have the old school Atari 2600 controllers. My, my dad went to a computer store and bought this thing and bought, like, uh, aftermarket controllers or, or whatever. And I found one online, actually. One called the Archer Quick Shot. It was one of the ones that we had. I just did a quick Google image search for um, Atari 2600 um, controllers. Like that, that was the one I had. The other one that was my favorite one, I uh, couldn't find it. I don't remember the name. It's been so long. Uh, it's early 80s for that. And we had two cartridges for it. We had Qbert, which today is still one of my favorite games, Great games. Great of game. all time, and Minor 2049er, oh, nice. which was. Yeah, that was another good game. It used to be for a while, and I haven't looked in a while. It used to be you can get a emulated version for the computer you could download and uh, run. Um, never did finish that game. And, I mean, not that you could. There was 10 levels, and once you got past level 10, I think it reset or something. But uh, uh, awesome game. And then, but again, it was a lot of couch co-op because it was two-player port, so we could play two-player. Minor 2049, if I remember correctly. Or maybe it was Q or here, which one it was alternate players. Yeah. So one person would play, and then when that person died, player two would come up and they would play. And there was no connection between the two players whatsoever, other than they were sharing the same console. Um, and then uh, NES came out, and uh, I got that a couple years after that came out. Friends of mine had it in their house first. I got it with the light gun, but not the robot, didn't have the robot. Mm-hmm. And uh, some great games on that. Um, Akari Warriors was one of my favorites uh, of all time. Classic two-player game. My brother and I would just play. And, of course, if you died, ABBA, we're back in action. Yeah, (laughs) absolutely. Uh, Mega Man was another big popular one at my house. Um, My brother loved Mega Man. I was okay with it, but Tim, Tim really liked it a lot. Uh, Of course, Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt, you know, the standards. Um, Double Dragon was another classic at the house. Uh, Dragon Warrior was one. We started getting into the RPGs at that point. And so Dragon Warrior, Final Fantasy, a friend of mine had Final Fantasies, uh, the first ones, they'd bring that one over. Um, and we played that thing. We had the power pad for a while. We even had the power glove. Oh, God. Yeah. The power pad, which is hit the floor repeatedly with your fists. That was always yes, a good one. Yes, that's what that always sort of degenerated to. And then the power glove, which was just crap. Uh <laughs> <laughs> and then um, we had we had I mean any controller that came out my brother and I would get our hands on it one way or other either a friend had it because you know my mom had this daycare center so either other kids had it and brought it or we had it and so there was tons of just really weird controllers that came out for the NES there was one called the Mega that we had it had a little LCD screen on the top of it <clears throat> it had a built-in game if you played the game and got a certain score you unlocked certain features on the controller. And the controller was a little bit programmable. Um, just they had all the, the best controller though was the NES Advantage. Hands down, that was a joystick. That was a tabletop joystick, basically oh, yes, yes, with yes, two right. large buttons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was that was the best, possibly the best video game controller I ever used. Wow, you had such a totally different experience from mine. I was so desperate to play with other people that I started doing play by mail games. Oh wow. <laughs> You know, because uh, PC just wasn't, you know, they weren't up to it. It wasn't yeah. until, let's see, I guess EverQuest, maybe, because well, I never did Ultima Online. I mean, Doom. That there can, was someone else's real good MMO to play, you can other do than it. some version of a MUD. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, totally different world between the crappy capabilities of computer gaming at the time and what you guys were able to do with consoles well we had um i had a i guess it was in early 90s we had a computer we had a couple of uh computer games for it legend of valor was one of them 
um, which wasn't very good. You used to be able to get fined for looking into people's windows in that game. This is weird. I still don't think I remember the game. Like, if a there was like a patrolman walking by and you were looking in somebody's window, like you got fined. It was like a window tax or something. That was bizarre. But um, so it was a game to teach voyeurism. Yeah, I guess. Well, yeah, it was just, it, really. <laughs> but it was something that I just never really got into. Was the computer gaming? I watched other people play like Mist and stuff like that throughout the nineties. Yeah, but so I've just never, and I and to this day, I just don't like gaming on a computer. Did you I, guys ever do the keyboard's like, awkward. Like the early um, uh, strategy games, like uh, Dune Two or Command and Conquer, First no. Starcraft. No. Uh, like those that. RTS games. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I did like uh, Art of War, Sun Tzu's Art of War, which is actually so much huge. later. Well, that, but was, that was great. That was yeah, a great was, game. That was insane. I also played um, uh, Red Storm Rising, which still comes down as I think is like the best uh, sub warfare strategy game. Yeah, that was uh, one of Clancy's first. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was second book. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, those were great. But I'm thinking even a little before that. Uh, yeah, the old RTS is where. If you really wanted to play with other people, you had to get together and have a LAN party. Mm -hmm. So that yeah. wasn't the words they would have used, but yes. Well, that's what we called them. Because uh, you did, you set up your own little lo local area network and or a little uh, Tolkien ring. <laughs> get going. Token ring, not Tolkien. Tolkien, not Tolkien. <laughs> Tolkien. Token. Same thing. Well, Tolkien is the guy who wrote Lord of the Rings. It's very yes, different. Yes, that's than... what it was all based on. That's what everybody thought. It's not what it was. <laughs> sure it is that's what the west coast people apparently thought even though an ibm who actually invented it was a very different experience yeah well people at ibm were morons yes clearly clearly <laughs> so they, they were crap at branding things my yeah. branding's better <laughs> I, well it should have been then they would have been sued it's also to, a uh, copyright lawsuit but still <laughs> so i clearly had a different experience than either of you um so i came up as an IBM -er. so we had a computer so I started with computers and you know I, I don't know the exact start of this but the stuff that I remember sort of really diving in deep to for for gaming was um the Sierra games all the Sierra oh, online yeah. or entertainment games so all the you know King's Quest and Space Quest and Heroes Quest and Police Quest and they, they had a theme branding the pixel hunts <laughs> um because those were pixel hunts weren't they find the right pixel to click on to get the right combo of things. No, 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 no. So the King's Quest stuff Start was actually, it was, it was, um, it was, it was an eight bit Zork was the best way to describe it. So you had guys, you walked around, but you had to type in a lot of your commands. Okay. So it was wow, interactive. Totally this over here. Remembering. Yeah, it was, it was a very much an interact and do and so forth. And we got, they did a lot of their, um, their copy protection kind of stuff in order to make sure people weren't, you know, just stealing the game by putting it into the manual. So you had oh, to type yeah, in the name yeah, of the yeah, spell and yeah. all that for the manual, which is annoying <laughs> as hell. Um, so I think I started on a lot of that. Um, I didn't have a lot in the way of console stuff, so I had the NES, but I had Mario Brothers, Duck Hunt, Akari Warriors, and that was it. Um, I didn't have any other games, so I would always go down to the, the video store and rent a game for the weekend. Mm -hmm. So me and my buddy, we'd yeah. run a game, it was like a buck or two, you, you'd go crazy on it, and then I was done. But all everybody else that I, I knew had a lot of games. So one of my friends um, played a full season of baseball and kept track of all the stats. I don't know why, but he actually had box yeah. scores. Um, wow. <laughs> which was impressive. For um, his fake baseball team. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's was, cool. So I actually think that's cool. <laughs> um you know, I had my, my cousin had, as you said, Chris, you had all the systems and all the little things. He actually had the robots. Uh, and I remember oh, how wow. when I played yeah. the games with that. He had everything. He had the controller, you know, the, the joystick thing. He had all those pieces. I didn't have any of that stuff. So I wasn't really that connected into NES. I knew it was there, but it was so expensive. I mean, they say in today's dollars, the NES is like $1,200. Um, it That's really right. was expensive at the time. So we just didn't we didn't get any of the other stuff, um, you know, didn't have a daycare I guess that that would have made it worthwhile. So it wasn't until the Genesis that I actually Sega Genesis that I actually started doing more mm -hmm. console stuff. That the price point came on that quite a bit lower, and with oh, those yeah. and I got in when it started. So I actually had Altered Beast, uh, oh, which was yeah, the so did I. Game. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
I only <laughs> played that in the arcade. Okay. <laughs> Rise from your grave. Right, that's right. <laughs> um, Put it in another car. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I had that, and I had a couple more games on that one, and that's when I actually started buying games myself. So I got, you know, a game every couple of months out of my own money. Um, but I still didn't accumulate that many games. So that one, I think, had a lot more of the multiplayer. As, as you were saying, Chris, you had this, you know, one person would play, the next person would play. Well, this one allowed you to do, in my mind, a lot, started to allow you to do the multiplayer stuff. So you were playing sports pretty heavily, right? So um, I remember playing NHL hockey on there, which was fantastic. Uh, Joe Montana's Sports Talk Football, which was not necessarily a very good game, but it was one of the first sort of games with some level of different uh, voiceover, depending on what you actually did, gave you different pathing and different commentary, and there was sort of running talk, the yep. whole thing. Uh, but it was it had a major flaw in it. Like a lot of these early games, right? they always had the flaw. This flaw was oh, if yeah. you were Randall Cunningham as a quarterback, all you had to do was just run a bootleg. Every play, and you would score every time. Yep. Which was John Elway's ridiculous. quarterback was just like that too. Yeah. Or if you pass down the sideline, you could run straight to the sideline and always have a. Yeah, I still have NHL '93. Yeah. I have my Genesis. Yeah, I still have that. It was just a fantastic game, though. That was a thing. Was a you know you you fade to the left and go to the right, and you always score. Right. Yep. Um. So I, I did a I bunch never of those. Played a sports game. No. Well, that's, that's I was never big into them, but I played some. Yeah. Well, I mean, that well, was a way to get multiple players. Around, going. And I think I was playing Tie Fighter and the first Civ okay. when those were right around '93, right? Well, no. Uh, a little before. before that, actually, I think in more like '90, '91 for yeah. Genesis, right? Yeah. Like it was '93 because you had NHL '93, '94, '95. That was that's when it was really at its peak. So yeah. the earlier stuff, I think, came out a little bit earlier. You know, it launched a little earlier than that. Yeah. Don't some people still consider it's one of those NHL games, like the ultimate hockey game? It's, it's no things ever come close. Uh, one of those really early ones. Yeah, 95 like, uh, or 97 or something. Yeah. 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 Um, so I had going with that parallel. And again, the reason for that was all the, you could do the interactive stuff, right? That was when you could play with your friends. And that's why the sports yeah. stuff was best at that. Uh, notwithstanding Kari mm -hmm. Warriors, where you could have both of you running along at the same time, or, or um, uh, Commando, or uh, there was a side school, <clears> which <throat> I can't think of off the top of my head. Um, Contra was Contra. a classic. You could oh, do God. two at one time. Yeah. Yeah, so that was a really good one <laughs> for that purpose. Um, but I also was running you know, a lot of computer stuff. So I, I was into uh, bulletin board stuff, too. So I was, I was playing door games. Uh, for those yeah. who remember those things, so I was playing, you know, Legend of the of the Red Dragon or Trade Wars or VGA Planets, um, which oh, allowed God. you to do, you know, <laughs> what was it? Every day had the turns, right? So maybe you have one or two turns per day, but everybody was sort of sequenced off of those, which were kind of, you know, so it had multiplayer interaction kind of stuff, but not really. Um, so it was it was an RTS. It was asynchronous. And, yeah, it was asynchronous RTS. Um, not not uh, not Lord, but the other ones were at least, and VGA Planets and so forth was was an RTS. Um, so I guess I, I except that wasn't real time. Asynchronous strategy. Well, RTS is real time. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I should have wiggled my finger and pushed up my glasses. Well, actually, <laughs> sorry. The screen. I hate it when people do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> as we would think of RTSs today. Uh, this was the closest you could do to that. But I, I guess it was a transition. So I would play, you know, I did a couple of these games early on. Um, I had, you know, NES for that brief time. I had Genesis for, for a while. Uh, when I hit college, that's when Doom came so out. Around, when would this be? 95. Okay. So that was the first sort of exposure to this, you know, again, the LAN stuff. So my dorm room didn't have a LAN yet. We didn't have internet. Some of the, some on campus had it, but we didn't have it yet. So we were able to play Doom by actually, you know, dial up from room to room. So it was just basically two of us, you know, sitting in, or was it we just sitting between rooms, like next to each other, and we were dialing up to each other, which is an awkward thing. But you could actually go and play Doom that way, which was fantastic. Uh, and so I think that drew, you know, drew me in quite a bit more. Huh. I don't remember doing that. Quake. I'm not doing that with Quake. Okay. That's My cool. brother was big into Doom and Quake, those games. He was very big into them. Tim was uh, developing his own levels for Quake. They had a Quake editor. Okay, yeah, that was. And he was all into that. Yeah, I never got into that. I was, I wasn't gaming at all at that point. Uh, I didn't start gaming again until I was in graduate school. 
Well, see, that was that was what I was gonna say. Is that I hit you know college. I did a little bit. Uh, there was a Genesis floating around, so some people would go yeah. over and play that. But I would say basically between about ninety eight and two thousand five, I don't think I played any games. Uh, I, yeah. was, I was out entirely. I didn't have a console. I didn't play anything on the computer. Um, in graduate school, I didn't have time. Though I actually, one of my roommate or my office mate was playing various games, including like Warcraft and so forth, at midnight, um, mm-hmm. one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning. And I wasn't doing that. I was, you know, in school. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've ever stopped. I've always either been playing games or running games. You know, either running a game company or playing some kind of video game or well, when you were running the game company were you still playing games or were you burnt out from it no i pay uh that's when i was playing like uh fbs and civ and got completely away from playing mmos okay uh so because just uh couldn't made me want to vomit just even <laughs> thinking about it um, when i was i would i would go home watch my brother play he'd play and i played with him so i'm like he had a super nintendo for a while and we played the, the star fox stuff like that and then um, he had he had the PlayStation I think first because I didn't get it until like I was in grad school. And I think that was Final Fantasy VII was PlayStation, yeah. or was it Tekken? Was one of the really big games on that Tekken? Yeah, we used to. Yeah, Just I had a friend who had good beat him up. Yeah, Tomb PlayStation Raider. in college, she had a Tekken. Yeah. Was yeah. that PlayStation One or PlayStation Two? Was Tomb Raider? PlayStation One. one. Okay. Oh, Tomb Raider. I don't know. Um, but my brother, I remember watching my brother play at least fifty hours worth of Final Fantasy VII at oh, least. God. He's played a lot. Well, I think that's still considered the the Final Fantasy game, right? Or at least for the American releases. I wouldn't be surprised. The Japanese it was... had what ten thousand different versions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I wouldn't be surprised. That's the standard. But yeah, I mean, I I just basically stopped um, or very very casual gaming from say college into graduate school. Um, yeah. That, so that I got a so you could PlayStation. focus, or you just lost interest? I just lost interest. I, I've, like I've said before, I, for me, it's been cycles of interest and non-interest. Uh, and, see, I flip between style of game. Yeah. So I, I very rarely lose complete interest. Although there was probably a six-month period there where I was mostly playing board games. Uh, the old bookcase games. Mm-hmm. Did those well, a lot. Because I now, found a that, group that was really into board games, and yeah. you'd get together six people willing to get together for four hours. Right. Yeah, well, yeah we were doing Dungeons & Dragons and stuff like that, but um, I have to say, there's one, I, I guess consoles I've given up on, I was still going to the arcade regularly. Because right? mm. that was more of a social experience oh, yeah. than it was a gaming experience in many ways. I mean, we had fun with the games, and we did a lot, of, a lot of the fighting games is what we were doing at that time. So you'd line your quarters up against the, <laughs> the 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 machine, and you know you take your turn, and whoever won stayed, and loser paid, and that went through. And so I was doing that, um, but again, it was mostly to hang out with friends. I was enjoying the games, don't get me wrong, but it was the social element that was driving most of that. So that was like Mortal Kombat kind of time. Yeah, Street Fighter Two. Okay. Street Fighter Two, Mortal Kombat, and then all the clones. I mean, they were just. Yeah. Tekken. I mean, all these things spun off. Of... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, man. That was the one. That was another good game. Yeah. I mean, that was a nice four-player game yeah. that was side-scroller. Well, kind of side... It wasn't really a side... I guess it kind of a side-scroller kind of thing. Um, I, I couldn't go through all the arcade games that we played. And you were never an MMO player, were you, Chris? No, because I have an addictive personality. Hmm. Really? You think? Look at it, the guitar? Yeah. <laughs> So uh, I knew that if I went I totally down that rabbit that, hole, I am. I have a really yeah. bad one. Yeah. If I went down that rabbit hole, I wouldn't come out. So I don't. I don't do Warcraft. I don't do any of that stuff. And then, uh, Stephen, I know you've dabbled some. Mm-hmm. What was your first one? MMO. Yeah. Uh, God, probably RuneScape. Ooh, how much did you play RuneScape? Too much. <laughs> oh, I never knew you played that. I played it for about a year. Okay. But I was, again, it's that addictive personality thing, so um, I was less productive on my work for a little while. Uh, it was That was the time when I was actually working side by side with my wife, so we had a shared desk. And so she had one computer to the side, I was sitting here, and I would get up, you know, we'd get up out of our, you know, up in the morning, eat breakfast, shower, whatever, 
and sit down to work. And she'd sit down and do work, and I'd pull up the game. Um, <laughs> and I'd play for like eight hours, and she would just get progressively more pissed off at me. I mean, we were recently married at that point. Um, and so I was doing that. Uh, yeah, you're lucky you're not a dead man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I got a good wife. That's really what it, what it is. Or um, Castrati. <laughs> but it, the key, again, the key thing of that is that um, I don't, I only do things sort of to a ridiculous extent. I, I can't dabble in stuff. Um, which is why, again, I stayed away from things like Warcraft because it is a, you know, what did you, didn't you check it and see that you'd spent like, you know, five years of, of online gameplay or something insane? Like that? <laughs> It's not bad. It was only like 3,000 hours. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, so I was, I was casual. That's 3,000 hours <laughs> of in-game time. That's not including all of the strategy sessions and so forth you had, right? That is correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I probably put... See, what was the first modern MMO I really went hardcore on? Probably Neocron, which is a German cyberpunk uh, MMO that I, I mainly like. It's a good thing you never got exposed to this, Stephen. You would have gone insane. Because it had vehicles that were separately controlled from the gunner. So lots of two-player, three-player, four-player vehicles. And I started dual boxing so that I could drive and gun a tank at the same time. The so two, two computer side-by-side. Side. And watching the one while gunning with the other. And then I think the worst I ever got, at one point I was five boxing. Uh, and running my own dungeons in World of Warcraft. Because I couldn't find a good tank and healer, so I just figured, screw it, I'll do it all. <laughs> so, yeah, it got a little got a little crazy. A little Some system. of it just because I wanted to try to see if I could do it. Mm -hmm. you know, see if it worked, see how the technology worked, because I was always fascinated with that. Um, but yeah, I've done my share of MMOs. I think I've tried almost everything. At one point or another, either in alpha, beta, or live, I've got all kinds of lifetime memberships. I'm a nut. Lifetime memberships are things you've never actually turned on. Actually, I don't think I've ever actually gone past the first minute of Star Trek Online. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't have a lifetime subscription. <laughs> <laughs> but I booted it up and went, wow, this is lame. Because <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get to do... Uh, Space combat right away. Hmm. You just run around as this crappy model of a. Oh god, the textures were horrible. And space combat's the good part of that game, according to people, and it didn't get me there instantly. So I said, "Screw it, we'll play some Privateer." <laughs> so I did. I, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, a very little online gaming really until Xbox Live. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's pretty close to no online gaming until Xbox Live for me. See, I hadn't touched a console until Chris got me back into it. We sat down in his living room, and was it Gears of War 2? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And I went, this is the greatest game ever. And I think the next day I went out and bought an Xbox 360. <laughs> and it wasn't that much longer that you came to me and said, hey, you need to get an Xbox. And I'm like, what now? I've heard of that, I think. And that's about where I was at in that process. Again, I hadn't owned a console since the early 90s. So we're talking 20 or 15 years or something like that at that point. Um, so, you know, I went and got out, and then I think I got Borderlands, and uh, you carried me <laughs> to, you know, max level one one day. Uh, oh, that's right. You were watching a movie. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For two hours, hours you played. <laughs> and then, then yeah, I think you just occasionally wiggle the stick to make sure you didn't well yeah my wife and I were watching a movie I just had the, the controller near me I was just flipping the stick every once in a while you know it's good enough I apparently didn't die I, I think every once in a while like the thing would shake and I would be like oh I wonder if I'm dying or whatnot uh, who knows <laughs> this is probably not okay yeah <laughs> maybe Robert's still there he'll text me otherwise if he isn't I don't know yeah it was pretty damn fun <laughs> I have to say though I do like the um, handsome jack edition Borderlands oh, for Xbox One. That's a that prequel, the Borderlands prequel game. It's a lot of fun. It's all the same kind of humor, except for the uh, the different characters actually matter. Yeah, that's like, weird. which is nice. <laughs> it's not like Destiny. <laughs> yeah, doesn't matter what you play. <laughs> yeah, the new expansion's out, right? I don't think any. No, not until the nineteenth. Oh, I'll 
we'll play it because we've paid for it, but <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm not too right. excited about it. I'm not even sure if I'll play it at this point. I mean, I, I won't really play Halo Halo's. Five. So, um, so, yeah, they dropped the ball. Yeah. Well, you know, um, I sort of the Xbox One is sort of the latest to the uh, sort of more recent sort of I don't know interest or, or whatever. Uh, I had the PlayStation in grad school. I was really a late comer into that, but I had, I had a very few games. Silent Hill, I had the original one of those. That game, well, I was in grad school, and my wife and I were married. We were uh, in our townhouse apartment, and that game just creeped her out. <laughs> creeped me it's, out too. It's a super creepy game. It was a. I mean, it was like one of the first, you know, sort of horror genre games, you know, and just weird. Yeah. Um, Parasite Eve, I had both of those, one and two. That was a lot. Of, I remember enjoying that. It was a lot of fun. Metal Gear Solid was the... Um, I had that. That was sort of the revitalization uh, of the Metal Gear franchise. Because that came out for NES, but yeah, Metal Gear Solid was sort of like, oh, wow, this is you know really good stuff. And then uh, my brother got me an Xbox after I moved to Kentucky after grad school. So I had an Xbox, the original Xbox for a while. Uh, played... What was the Riddick game? Escape from Butcher's Bay. That's supposed to be a good game. That was outstanding. Yeah, because yeah. um, Vin Diesel was actually part of that game. Vin I've heard a lot of people consider that the sequel to uh, Pitch Black, Pitch Black, as opposed yeah. to the actual movie sequel. Uh, yeah, actually, it's more of a prequel to Pitch Black, but yeah. Um, the I think it's supposed to be a prequel to Pitch Black. Anyway, um, it's probably the best of uh, Riddick part of the Riddick franchise. Mm -hmm. That game. Great game. And then, of course, you know, I got the 360 and then the one, but over the last few years. All right, so that raises a good question. Best uh, movie or whatever port to a game? Oh, God. Riddick. Riddick works for you? Yeah. E.T.? On Atari? No? <laughs> Aren't they all well, in, they desert? in the desert? Actually, I think you live, you're going to be living near them now, uh, Robert. You can just go out and get yourself an ET cartridge every once in a while. Yeah, it's glow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, White Sands Missile. It's out there. Lots of weird stuff out here. Good times. Movie, crappy movie tie-in game. I well, there's lots of crappy movie games. Well, I don't know if I've ever played a movie tie-in game. Really? You can't think of one. Best Because I never... Because people always talk about GoldenEye being this awesome game, but I never played it. One of the that best was, FPS games. Early. Yeah, that's... What was that for? That wasn't for Super Nintendo, was it? I have no idea, guys. Let's take a drink cast, maybe? Maybe 64. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I didn't have... That was... I was out. I was out of the game at that that sort of time it was like that was so. the first n64 was the first one with the rumble packs right i think so because i think that was the deal was they originally programmed that thing to have the cartridge reload was to pop out the rumble pack and pop it back in though apparently that went away in in the uh, the actual release i thought that was sort of an interesting approach to using your controls differently um yeah. Yeah, I was out of it at that period. I don't know for sure. I remember hearing of the games and stuff, but no, I don't remember. I can't think of anything. I played a couple Lego games. That's. I played about 30 seconds of the Harry Potter one <laughs> on my phone and went, wow, this is lame. Um, there was a Ghostbusters uh, game that they actually got all the voice actors back for. Which was really? kind of fun. Yeah, that was... Uh, That's cool. Bill Murray, I'm pretty sure, was was a, was asleep when he recorded it. But uh, it was, <laughs> it was it a was terrible, terrible game that actually had funny vocal parts to it. But it was a terrible game. It, there was one for NES that was pretty bad, for Ghostbusters. I remember that one. I don't remember any of this stuff. It was a tough one. Um, the, yeah, I mean, there's a long history of bad movie games well what's yours uh, steven do you have one that's tough again i didn't have a lot of games so um i was just more interested in this this question because it, it was a a thing right it was that we're creating all of these games around um, movies yeah. movies you know you're trying to have some connection 
I'm not sure if any of them really popped to me as being this sort of fantastic experience. The one thing I always did remember, there was, um, what was that terrible Steven Spielberg film where the kid was like a robot or something? Um, like they AI? Had to, what? AI? Yes, AI. So leading up to AI, they actually had one of the, the earliest um, sort of massive online sort of puzzle game interactive things. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, whatever that immersion kind of a thing was. And that actually was a really good game that was actually built up and you tried to learn all this stuff about these things. You had to like, you know, find websites to get into and then crack codes on them and all that stuff. So you thought, oh my God, this was kind of cool. The movie should be good. Then you watched the movie. It had nothing to do with the game in any way, shape or form. And it was a terrible, terrible movie. Um, yeah, a lot of those augmented reality games yes. during that period were really cool. Yeah. I remember EA had one called Majestic. It's the coolest concept ever. You go on your computer to log in to play the game, put in your information and stuff, and then it looks like it crashes and you didn't complete your registration. Okay. Right? But you're already in the game. <laughs> and then you like get a phone call. You could get things in the mail uh, telling you to go to this pay phone and run around and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And it lasted for a hot minute because it was way too expensive to run. Yeah, so I wonder, is it, can you run any of those things without, you know, actually turn a profit? I think you probably could now, given smartphones. Okay. Um, yeah. And if you were really clever about using other players to do your work for you, you know, one player would set up a mission for another player. Okay. So they'd be paying you to do the, their work. Okay. You'd have to use quasi-employees. I think the main thing holding them back right now is liability. Because mm. some mm. idiot's going to do something stupid and get shot by some you know, right. gang member because they went down the wrong damn street with their fake gun. Mm -hmm. um, They're walking around with their phone with the, uh, the overlay yeah. of the, the reality. Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah, and they think you're filming them or something. Yes. Um, but yeah, augmented reality. There was something about bees. <laughs> I love bees. Is that the name of the company that did a bunch of those? Uh, Something about bees. <laughs> I Cheerios? Remember. I don't know. Uh, Movies <laughs> were doing those a lot for a while. <laughs> Cheerios. Yes. Very nice. Well done, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Something uh, about bees. Um, yeah. yeah, no, I that was... It, I think it is. That I love bees. <laughs> but it's an interesting notion of what? Connecting the, with the audience, right? right. You can yeah. do it that way. And again, I got excited about a movie that turned out to be terrible. Um, so yeah. I call that a win, at least, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I went for the company. should be yeah. lowering your expectation. No, I, 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 again, we recognize these things are produced by very different people, right? right? I mean, making a movie has only some relationship to actually making a game. Um, though I know that's the call now with, like, Chris Roberts trying to say he's taking his, his film studio stuff back to gaming. So maybe that there is a translation, but... Um, I don't know. I think similar, some similar skills, but totally different design philosophy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, people have to interact. Or movies, quite frankly, are purely passive experience. Well, hell, if you do a lot of these things that are just voice acting, if you do uh, animated stuff, they don't even interact. I mean, they're not even recording at the same time. Right. Which is mind-blowing to me. I don't know how they actually craft some of these things. If you are think of like an interactive dialogue where I do all of my dialogue and then you do all your dialogue and then we splice them all together. Yeah, it seems to work animated, but if that last, uh, what, Arrested Development was any indication, it doesn't work so well live. <laughs> yeah, maybe they'll figure it out for the next season, so who yeah. knows. Yeah. Uh, Matrix. There's another one. There was a Matrix game that was apparently really good. Yeah, and you know when I found out? One week before they canceled it. <laughs> when, oh, Matrix online game. Yeah. Gosh, they canceled it. Yeah, it was awesome. Well, for a minute. Yeah. That was just popped in as you guys were talking about movies. It's like, what is it? I knew there was other, some, a few others out there that were good. Yeah, there you go. Then there's a movie tie-in game that I kind of almost played. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Probably a lifetime well, subscription, but... That's the problem with an MMO. I mean, they turn them off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, all the Star Wars stuff. Yeah, TIE Fighter. That was the yeah. best movie tie-in tie game I played. Fair enough. TIE Fighter was awesome. That was a fantastic space sim. You know, I always don't think of the Star Wars video games as 
related to the movies. Not and it's I, like it's it's taken it's, it's, like it's, it's of them, and we don't even think of that that way. Yeah, that Star Wars franchise has taken a life of its own beyond the movies. That it's it's almost to me something like, of course, it's tied to it, the movies started it right. right There's right. no doubt in my mind, but I don't think in that way. Unlike you know the Matrix online game, right, right, clearly tied to a specific movie. Whereas like Knights um, of the Old Republic is a great game in and of itself, but it has nothing to do with right. the movies or Star Wars Galaxies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was sweet. The ultimate sandbox MMO yeah. that they killed. Hey, they've got Battlefront coming out soon, where they apparently can't do half the things that you could do on the old Battle- Battlefront. But I don't even want a uh, solo experience with that game. I want it to be like Battlefield. Battlefield, the campaign is just a big waste of time. Yeah. I want to go in and play Battlefield in the Star Wars universe. Mm-hmm. I don't even care if it's a skin. <laughs> but they've been talking about gameplay will be totally different and all that. I just want to do the Battle of Frickin' Hoth. <laughs> you know? I want to run around with a lightsaber and, you know, drive an at at. Oh, God. There's going to be Steven in an at at. There's going to be many hours of me hunting you down, isn't there? <laughs> you got to get the logs. And you're <laughs> As you yell at Chris and I for doing it wrong. <laughs> Actually, you brought up uh, something else that the sandbox games. That's one thing I got into with PlayStation 2 because of Grand Theft Auto 3. Hmm. Oh, okay. So basically kind of do whatever you want, whenever you want kind of games. Yeah. And I've always enjoyed those. Those are kind of nice. You can don't you can go do the story mission or not. Yeah, I hate the invisible wall. Hmm. Yeah, you've reached the end of the Yeah. Story. Yeah, it's just like, yeah. I want to play the way I want to play. Right. It's going to be a, you're on your... Well, that's not true. I do kind of like the on-the-rails... Call of Duty, you know, movie experience. Uh huh. Yeah. They're they're fun. Yeah. yeah. But the, yeah. the multiplayer on that, forget it. I'm not a 12 year old. I don't have those kind of twitch reflexes. Mm-hmm. I don't like spawn and die. Mm-hmm. I like objective based gameplay. So, or it's not a who can peg the other person in the head quick enough and respawn 10 seconds later for the 10,000th time. So, Fair enough. There's a there's a great video by sarcastic gamer talking about how he's giving the other people kill streaks and <laughs> those kind of stuff because his purpose is to spawn and die it's 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 hysterical <laughs> yeah steven you you must hate those games i don't even step into them so yeah so counter-strike is not your thing because yeah. you go a little berserk in in battlefield yeah yeah. Well, again, if I don't feel like I'm controlling my reality, all I'm doing is spawning and dying. Well, what's the point? I can, right. I can easily That's just go point. and hit my head against a wall and accomplish the same thing. Yeah, there seem to be a lot of people that either can get past that, or I don't know, or masochists or something that seem to enjoy that whole quick respawn, go out, die kind of gameplay. Yeah. yeah I, I just don't get it. Battlefield's as close to as I want to get. Yeah. Yeah. And it, for me, it degenerates to that quite a bit because I'm just not that good at it. Yeah. Although I do, I do. After we kind of got in the groove, I did enjoy the Destiny multiplayer. That was kind of fun. I like the uh, mechanics of that better than like Battlefield's mechanics. It's a very it, the game plays so smooth. Uh-huh. It's just everything else that sucks. Yeah, where nothing about Battlefield works. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. or a Battlefield that played more like Borderlands. Oh, that'd be great too. That would be another good one. Yeah. Because Borderlands is too much of a serious first person shooter game for me. Like, oh, I'm not multiplayer. that good at it. Yeah. Oh, I, I've never even tried the multiplayer. Oh, not, I'm sorry, not Borderlands. Battlefield. Sorry. Oh, okay. Battlefield. So, <clears throat> I don't know. I, I'm just not that good at it. So, it's a lot of spawning and dying. And uh, I don't want to necessarily put the time in to get good at it. Whereas, Borderlands, I feel like I can pick up mechanics up pretty quick. Well, see, this is why I like, I like Battlefield because I could get into a vehicle, so there was a little bit more leeway for mistakes. And that was the whole sure. thing for me. That I could take more damage, and then that allowed Vehicles me to ramp fun. up my skill set. Yeah. You know, you have to play for a certain amount of time to actually get skills, and if I was dying in 10 seconds, it wasn't anything. I remember the first couple of times we started playing Battlefield, um, that was just a mess because we picked it up not at launch we picked it up you know six months into the game or something it yeah. was it was and not... thankfully jason carried us for a while yeah 
<laughs> He's the fourth member of when we play, the three of us play. Frequently, we have another friend who Chris knew from grad school named Jason, who uh, is very good and frequently carries our ass. Yeah. <laughs> it's a natural skill for the stuff, the flow. He, he has a good sense of flow. I think that's what it comes down to. Well, that, he was yeah. always standing in the right place. Plays 24 hours a day. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. He's just very good. So, and he plays everything. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, he's, I've, I've, he plays end game rating and wow. He plays first, every kind of first person shooter, plays strategy games. And... Console and PC, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I think at the same time. So I'm wondering if there's actually <laughs> two of them. <laughs> that or how he, he's like, like dual controllers that he's running with one hand that he's modded or something. Well, you can do the one thing and then, you know, the rest of it's done with your head. <laughs> That's what Microsoft would like you to think the Kinect can do. Cool. Yeah, no, mine's unplugged. Yeah. <laughs> I think it is for most people. Yeah. All right, so I think we're uh, running into a wall here now. We're, we're running yep. out of time. Steam, yeah. something like that. Robert? So, but hey, we're back. Yes. This is <laughs> season two. And for those two. of you that listen this long, you should get an award. <laughs> Let's face it, no one's listening this long. <laughs> You can follow us on Twitter at Our Awesome. I'll start posting again. Yeah, uh, you can follow me, Robert Macy, at uh, RS Macy. Crap, what's my Twitter? I think <laughs> I'm that's go with it. RS yeah. Macy. Yeah. Or R uh, Macy, maybe? I don't know. It's one or the other. Some guy. Uh, I'm not terribly clever in my names for things. And then, Stephen, what, what's yours? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> See, this is why we need the normal yeah. outro. Yeah, you can follow me at CW Culp, K U L P. Say Chris Chris is on the ball. He knows what he's doing. Yep. All right. Well, that will kick us out, and uh, we're off. See you guys at the next earliest possible convenient time for us to record. <laughs> okay. All right. Bye.